Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to our morning devotions here with Pastor Sutton on Thursday. And I checked, it's Thursday today, May 28th. Um, not many days left in the month. This is not your morning weather report, but it seems like I like to talk about the weather. But that's what we talk about as human beings, right? We talk about the weather. It's one of our, our topics we go to to converse. But it is. It, it, the weather today is kind of significant. It looks like we might have some some thunderstorms this afternoon. It, it, the amount of, the amount, well, not, 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 not over by you, Linda. <laughs> well, you're, I think you're going to get some rain, too. But um, I don't think it'll be like it is here. You guys are further out into the into the mitten. But um, there's some rain and, and storms moving up from the Detroit area this way. Um, it'll hit this afternoon. By the amount of rainfall that the weather service is saying, it doesn't look like it'll be um, it'll be a lot of rain. It'll just I think it's going to be one of those cases where the heat and the humidity are just going to come together and the air can't hold the water anymore and it's just going to fall out right because they're, they're looking at five hundredths or, or a tenth maybe of an inch um on the on the three forecasts although who knows who knows um so yeah <laughs> that's your that's your pastor sutton weather report for today um yeah sign signs up for vbs for sunday we did the the uh, read a board out front of the church here, and and uh, Deb Fisher was nice enough to take the letters and put them up on the on the south end of town, about down by Tri County Bank. So that's out. Our VBS is going to be uh, June eighth through the eleventh, from nine a.m. to eleven p.m. Uh, not, not eleven p.m. nine nine a.m. to noon. Nine a.m. to noon, um, June eighth to the eleventh. Um, so well, good morning, Michael. I'm glad you're with us from Goat Acres, and and uh, it was good seeing you yesterday evening uh jerry good morning um I, okay it's a beautiful day you're right you know it's the day that the lord has made let us rejoice um you know i like having sunshine in the morning but i don't like sunshine when it's 85 degrees i have to admit as much as i like warmer weather um the last few days have been kind of rough and I, I don't know about you guys but i haven't been sleeping that well because of the heat Good morning again, Linda. I'm assuming Keith is nearby you there. Good morning, Geraldine and, and Neil. Good to see you guys. Renee, good morning. Yes, it is cloudy. There's Wayne and Kathy. Wayne, uh, Mike was asking about you the other day, or yesterday. He said he hadn't seen you on here in a while. He was a little worried about you, but uh, there you are. Good morning, Leela, and, and good morning, Judy and Dan. I'm glad you guys are, are with us this morning. I heard... Uh, from somebody this morning that that Carol is Carol Veith is in the hospital here in Marlette too, so keep her in your prayers. I'll be giving her a call here after after we're done with this. I got to check on on Bob too and see if he's if he's out and how Shirley's doing. So anyway, I I burned up between the hymn and this five minutes, and and uh, we should get we should get into our text. So. I have my treasury of daily prayer here in, in front of me. If you have a hymnal, uh, Lutheran service book, page 295, you'll find daily prayer for individuals and families. And, and we'll make our beginning in remembrance of our baptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm is Psalm 80, Psalm 80, Psalm 80. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who led Joseph like a flock. You who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth. Before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. 
You make us an object of contention for our neighbors, and our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. You brought a vine out of Egypt and drove out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it. It took deep root and filled the land. The mountains were covered with its shade, the mighty cedars with its branches. It sent out its branches to the sea and its shoots to the river. Why then have you broken down its walls so that all who pass along the way pluck its fruit? The boar from the forest ravages it and all that move in the field feed on it. Turn again, O God of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Have regard for this vine, the stock that your right hand planted, and for the, for the son whom you made strong for yourself. They have burned it with fire. They have cut it down. May they perish at the rebuke of your face. But let your hand be on the man of your right hand, the son of man whom you have made strong for yourself. Then we shall not turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts. Let your face shine, that we may be saved. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Judy, no grumbling. You think I'm grumbling. Good morning, Verna. Good morning, Adam. I'm Norwegian. I grumble. It's what I do. It's in my makeup. I can't... I can't get away. I'm, I'm generally a happy and well-contented person, but I grumble. Anyway. Go pack. Our, um, our uh, New Testament reading, our, our gospel lesson today is from Luke chapter 20. One day as Jesus was teaching the people in the temple and preaching the gospel... The chief priests and the scribes with the elders came up and said to him, Tell us by what authority you do these things, or who is it that gave you this authority? He answered them, I also will ask you a question. Now tell me, was the baptism of John from heaven or from man? And they discussed it with one another, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say, why did you not believe him? But if we say from man, all the people will stone us to death, for they are convinced that John was a prophet. So they answered that they did not know where it came from. And Jesus said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. And he began to tell the people this parable. A man planted a vineyard and let it out to tenants and went into another country for a long while. When the time came, he sent a servant to the tenants so that they would give him some of the fruit of the vineyard. But the tenants beat him and sent him away empty-handed. And he sent another servant, but they also beat and treated him shamefully and sent him away empty-handed. And he sent yet a third this one also they wounded and cast out. Then the owner of the vineyard said, What shall I do? I will send my beloved son. Perhaps they will respect him. But when the tenants saw him, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Let us kill him so that the inheritance may be ours. And they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What then will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and destroy those tenants and give the vineyard to others. When they heard this, they said, Surely not. But he looked directly at them and said, What then is this that is written? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces, and when it falls on anyone, it will crush him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus' authority challenged. That's the, the first part of this text. Who are you and by what authority do you say and do these things? 
What authority have you been given to preach the gospel? Well, his authority comes from who he is. I am who I am. Yahweh, from God. Right? He is the only son, the only begotten son of, of the Father. And so he has the authority to preach as the Father taught. As he has heard from the Father, so he preaches. And as the Spirit hears from the Father and the Son, so it witnesses, confesses to us. It is wise, of course, the way Jesus responds to the question. And it is, it is, it is a weakness I recognize in myself when I read Jesus' words like this. He doesn't simply look at them and say, well, I am the one who has the authority, right? Professing himself to be God. Instead, he answers with a question. He puts them in the position where they either have to confess him as Lord or deny him as the very Son of God. Where they either have to point to the faith that they've been given or point from the faith that they do not have. Where they either have to confess that the God whom they serve as the Pharisees, the scribes, is the father of this man that's before him and gave the baptism of John to him, giving him the command to go and baptize, which the scriptures tell us he did. Make straight the way of the Lord. This is the voice crying in the wilderness. Make way the straight make straight the path of the Lord. Or they have to confess Christ. One or the other. They they don't have an option, right? They're, they're, and so what do they do? They say, ooh, right? Like a, like a fifth grader in the Bible history class when I ask a question and they don't really like the answer, ooh. Right? We don't know where it comes from. We don't know. You tell us. I'm not telling you. If you can't figure it out, then why would I tell you? Why would I begin an argument that is, is fruitless? See, I tend to be, by my nature, argumentative about these things. I believe truly in what it is that I teach and confess. And so when people question what it is that I say, it is in my nature to, to put the facts before them and argue it. But no one's, been, no one's been brought into the Christian faith by argument. No one's ever been argued into believing something. They... they come to faith and they, and they believe in Christ by their own realization, their own recognition of who Jesus is and what he has done and how the Father has done it through him. And that's faith. That's faith. That's what, that's what Jesus does here in this text. He leaves it, he leaves it up to the, the guidance of the Spirit, if you will, for the, for the Pharisees to confess him as Lord or to deny him as Lord, but not to argue them into into believing. <clears throat> that went down the wrong way. In in combination with this reading under the under the idea of authority, there's a writing in in <coughs> the Treasury of Prayer today from from Luther. I can't get the page to turn here. <clears throat> and Luther's talking about the authority of pastors. And, and we know that different churches and different faiths have different ways of, of placing men and, and women, unfortunately, in positions of authority over the church. Luther writes, This ministry will endure and is not to be replaced by any other. Now that's the ministry of Christ. That's the preaching of the gospel throughout the world. That's the great commandment of go therefore and, and um, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. So this ministry, which is the ministry of Christ, will endure, and it is not to be replaced by any other. But the incumbents of this ministry do not remain. They die. Pastors die. The apostles died. This necessitates an ever new supply of preachers, which calls for the employment of certain means. The ministry that is the word of God, baptism and holy communion, right? those are the gifts that God has given us and directed us through Christ to do ministry, service, 
came directly from Christ, but later Christ departed from this earth. Now a new way of sending is instituted, which works through man, but is not of man. We were sent according to this method. According to it, we elect and send others and install them in their ministry to preach and to administer the sacraments. This type of sending is also of God and commanded by God. Even though God resorts to our aid and to human agency, it is he himself who sends laborers into his vineyard. Therefore, everyone who preaches must realize that he has been sent. That, that is, he must know that he has been called. He dare not venture to sneak into the office furtively and without authorization. It must be done in the open. The sending is done through man. For example, when a city or a prince or a congregation calls someone into office, but at the same time, this person is sent by God. It's an interesting, interesting view. It's an interesting understanding. Well, it is, it's a faithful understanding of God's word that the ministry of Christ Jesus in this world is continued by men who have been sent by God, but at the same time are called by a congregation, right? Um, I don't come here to preach and teach by my own authority, right? It's not, it's not David who does these things. It is Pastor who does these things. And Pastor Sutton has been sent by the church, by God, and called by you to participate in this ministry and to offer you the service of the preaching of the word, baptism, the sacraments, the forgiveness of sins, the promise of life everlasting preached regularly. Every so often I, I run across, I mean, I, I go through this book every year. That's why it's a little tattered. And, and, and uh, when I read past that, it reminds me of the, the responsibility that I have as a pastor uh, to you and to God to, to be faithful to this word. Jesus' authority comes from who he is. The authority of the pastor, when it comes to the preaching and teaching, comes from God who sent him in the congregation who called him. Let's end our meditation on the text this day with, a, with a, a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, you are the stone that the builders rejected, but on the third day you became the cornerstone. By your word and spirit, open our hearts to receive you as the beloved Son sent from the Father, so that we might always embrace suffering as the means by which we enter into your glory. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Um, our catechesis today, I forgot to put the catechesis on the, on the screen. We, did we do the close of the commandments yesterday? Can I see? Can I see on here? I can't see on here. My friends, I don't know if we did the close of the commandments yesterday morning we must have so we must be on to we must be on to the uh, to the creed i'm going on to the creed even if we're not stay with me the uh, first article of the apostles creed i believe in god the father almighty what does this mean i believe that god has made me and all creatures and he has given me my body and soul eyes ears and all my members my reason and all my senses and still takes care of them he also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy, without any merit or worthiness in me. For all this, it is my duty to thank, praise, serve, and obey him. This is most certainly true. We continue with the creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
and that prayer which our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Yep. Uh oh. My hymnal is still out in the in the church where I have the prayers for today marked. Um, so I'm going to see if I can find them here in the back of my treasury of daily. Yeah, the prayers I want aren't in there. Oh, look, I've got another hymnal. I bet you're surprised by that, aren't you? Pastor has another hymnal in this study. Huh. Go figure. Um, our prayers today are for home and family. Let us pray. Visit, O Lord, the homes in which your people dwell, and keep all harm and danger far from them. Grant that we may dwell together in peace under the protection of your holy angels, sharing eternally in your blessings. Most gracious God, we give thanks for the joy and blessing that you grant to husbands and wives. Assist them always by your grace, that with true fidelity and steadfast love, they may honor and keep the marriage vows, growing in love toward you and in each other, and at last come to the eternal joy that you have promised. Heavenly Father, you have blessed us with the joy and care of children. Keep us calm, give us calm strength and patient wisdom, that as they grow in years, we may teach them to love whatever is just and true and good following the example of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, your Son grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and all people. Bless, guide, and govern the children and young people of your church by your Holy Spirit, that they may grow in grace and knowledge of your word. Grant that they may serve you well and usefully, developing their talents not for their own sakes, but to your glory and for the welfare of their neighbor. Protect and defend them from all danger and harm, giving your holy angels charge over them. Gracious Father, in your mercy look on those whose years increase, bring them, bringing them weakness, anxiety, distress, or loneliness. Grant that they may always know a care and respect, that they always have with them concern and understanding. Grant them willing hearts to accept help, and as their strength wanes, increase their faith with the constant assurance, assurance of your love through Jesus Christ, their Savior. Heavenly Father, in the time of pandemic, we ask for your mercy upon those who suffer from this illness. We ask also that you grant strength to those who live in fear, reminding them that in you we have nothing to fear. Grant them and us your peace in all things this day and always. In the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end. That our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day from all harm and danger, or the, kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I was looking a minute ago because the little eye thing that most of you have on your screen that tells you who all is is present here does not exist on my screen. Where it, where it does, I can't I can't look at a list. But Kathy tell you was here as she was cleaning and told me that it's it's Lotus's birthday today too. So happy birthday, Lotus! If you are watching now or if you're watching later. Um, We've, we've burned up our half hour, so uh, I pray the Lord's mercy upon you this day that you might enjoy what we have because it is his day, each as each day is, and that he keep you 
uh, in, in peace and in confidence in his word and the faith he's given you until that day he comes to claim us. So the peace of the Lord be with you, my friends, and we will see you tomorrow, Friday morning, for our devotions once again. God's peace.